Well, it's been a while since I did a video, and I've been working on my Sunbeam headlight, which was back in the day my very first product that I ever made. And uh, this was 1983 or 4, something like that, about 30 some years ago. And um, I don't have original molds anymore. And furthermore, the original, I used a metal reflector that I got from Rayovac, which is no longer available. I have one that we use as a sample. And what we did was make them out of aluminum. And then I powder coated them with a special, one of the special powder coats that uh, they have. I get them from Columbia Coatings, by the way, and it's a good, good company. And if you could see it, I'll come bring closer for you. You'd see that it's like a goldish color, which gives it why the name Golden Glow. And you can see the whole light there. It's all done with uh, die cast metal. And you can see the little builder's plate there that I made. And the objective of this uh, video is to show you how to make not only that little plate, and what to do with it, and also the um, number board. Uh, this light was made with uh, 3D printing, and uh, it, it's a, a quite a nice way to do it. Now, the original I did with uh, just by hand. I drew it on, uh, made a drawing, and, and just made it up with, uh, uh, milled it out or whatever I had to do to get it. And boy, I tell you what, it's much easier with the 3D printing. And we have real glass there, real glass on the sides this time. Last time I did it with uh, uh, plastic because I couldn't think how to get the glass. But now I have the glass, and I have two pieces. I have one that's behind it that's uh, um, sandblasted it to, to give it a uh, frosted effect. And if you want to enhance that frosted effect, you could also buy a frosted spray paint. You could put on one side or both sides to make it a little bit uh, more... Um, frosted, but uh, it seems to work out pretty good. Like I said now, the, the objective of this video is to show you how to make these etchings. Now, um, and also one more thing about the light, I wanted to show that we have, I made up these real nice uh, prints, and you can see this uh, 3D print here, or um, an isometric drawing of it, now, years ago I did that, and I did that all by hand drawing. I made it, you know, just uh, uh, pencil and paper. But now uh, that was able to be generated from the 3D model. Jay did that. And, of course, we have a bill of, a bill of um, materials. And then on this side we have all the parts and so on. But I did forget to put the builder's plate on there, and I'll have to do that on the next one. So some of the objective of this video is to show how to, do that anyway. Uh, how I made the how I made the uh, little uh, builders plates, and this could be used for anything as well as we're going to use it to actually make um, the number boards, uh, lumber, number board lettering. Okay, now this is a bunch of number plates. Okay, well Jay made the uh, the um, rendering there on the, the artwork, I should say. And then I turned the artwork into this, okay? And that's, a, I don't know how many, quite a number. And then from there, you could uh, use, believe it or not, you don't need to use a photo resist, uh, photo resist method. You could use this stuff here, believe it or not. Now this, right here, is the stuff from the advertisement from the newspaper. It's got that, like a glossy print to it. And if you could see, I'll hold it up to you, you can see there on the one side right here, you can see all the um, um, builder's plates printed out. Now, I, I did that with my regular laser. I have a laser printer, which is, if you, not to talk about printers, but if you go for the inkjet printers, oh, I can buy a printer for $69. Isn't that great? But what you don't realize is the, the ink lasts for one millisecond, and then you got to buy a $37 cartridge. To keep it running, and then if it if it runs out, like if you if you get a colored like like you're you're printing black and white, but yet if the red runs out for some reason, it stops printing. 
So it's a big scam if you want to know my opinion. So get the laser printer. Uh, you don't need to do color all the time. And uh, I use it for black and white and, 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 and so on. But now the secret to it is you got to do an artwork and you got to do that on, um, on CAD. Now this one was a difficult one to do so I asked Jay to do that. But on the number boards here, I did that myself. Uh, on CAD. Now what you do is you make the box and then you put the letters in and the letters are going to be in white of course, right? So when you take the box, you click on the box, this is just my program, I use TurboCAD 20 and you click on the box and then you can change the color, you know, from white to black. Well you change it to black but then the numbers disappear because they're behind it. So you got to click on that and then go into your program and bring it front. Well, they're still going to be black, so what you have to do is make those letters white. And when you do that, it comes out like that. Okay, so now I don't know how, how to work your program. You have to figure it out yourself, your own program. But um, I, make a neg I make this, which is like, I guess you would call it a negative. And then this stuff here is a transparency film. Now, in the old days, when you used to do a, a pr presentation, you used to project it up on a wall with the overhead projector, and I don't know how they do it today, but in any event, that's what uh, this material is. It's not cheap. It's a little bit on the expensive side. It's like $35 for 50 sheets, but I have it for a long time. I did all my all my etchings that you've seen me do for the K4 and, and some other etchings. I did builder's plates and different stuff, and I also make these. Now, these were made uh, for my headlight here. That says These are the spares, 875, which is uh, Jersey Central. Mikado engine that I want to build. Uh, but uh, I sandwich this between two pieces of glass and it, it's really protected. It doesn't really get that hot up there. I mean, it's not going to destroy it. But I do have extras just in case. And I can always come back another time. But now, back to this. What you do here is you take take this stuff and I, and I, I take it a piece of... This is... Shim stock, ten thousandths, I think it's ten thousandths thick. And you take some double O wool here and you brighten it up a little bit. Just, you know, take the oxide off. Now, if you want to do both sides, you can. But I'm going to show you what we're going to do on the back. We're going to do something different back there. All right, now you take that, and I bent it, but we're going to, we're going to use it, and I'm going to cut it. Here, let's see. Um, all right, we're going to take this out, and we're going to take scissors. I'm going to cut six of them off. Okay, I cut six of them off. Now you take the material which where I cleaned it, and you put this face side down. Now, by the way, you have to make when you're doing this etching and you're transferring it to the metal, you have to make it uh, reverse, lettering everything reverse, because when you transfer this, which I'm going to show you in a minute, to the metal, it's going to be then forward, okay, or right side up. Now you just position that on the metal. Now I'm going to cut this off, actually. You can cut this stuff with a scissors, believe it or not. We'll cut that off. And I'm going to stick it right down here on this mica top. Right like this. Now, I have this thing. This is an iron. And it's an iron that is used for model airplanes, the monocoat. Now, back in the day, I've been building model airplanes since the late 50s, early 60s. And back in those days, we used to use silk. And silk span and glue it on and all of that stuff and then heat, wet it and shrink it and everything. But then they come out, oh, in the late 60s with a monocoat, which is a, basically a plastic film. And it's got sticky stuff on it and you glue it onto the wood and then you heat it with a heat gun and it shrinks it or a hair dryer. And then they come out with this fancy iron. And I've had this one for, oh, 10, maybe 15 years, 20 years. And... Um, you could use this, but that doesn't mean you have to buy one of these. You could use this. It's a little easier to handle if you have one. 
If you don't, you could use a regular iron. It doesn't make any difference. Now, I have it set there. I don't know what I set it at, but I'm going to iron this stuff right on here. And I'm doing it right on the Formica here, you know. Now I'm going to press it down. And um, got to find something to hold it because it's getting hot. You gotta hold it down. And I'm transferring that ink now, believe it or not, to from the ink from my printer to the metal. Now the one thing I started to talk about was that on your printer, you have to set it up for the maximum dots per inch, which is twelve hundred dots per inch in most printers. And that gives you the blackest black you can get. Now the thing is, you won't think so, but it's got like a mottled effect to it. If, it's, if you hold it up to the light, you could see. And I think I might have some negatives here that were kind of rejects. I don't know if I have them. Uh, they were kind of... Well, these are all pretty good ones. Um, but anyhow, they get, they're, they're a little bit transparent. So you want to bring them back darker as possibly you can. Now... That's going to help with transferring the, the uh, i got to find something to hold this. Anything, right? Okay, now that is transferred to the metal. And it's hot. Okay. It's transferred on there. And, well, how do you get that off? What do you do? Well, you um, bring it over to the sink, and you put it under hot water, warm water. I like to use a little warm water. And you just kind of take your fingers and roll off the paper, and the ink stays there. Believe it or not. All right, now, I don't want the etch to, the back to etch. Now, this one here, I didn't do it, and it became pretty, pretty thin. And you could see, you could see the... Uh, etching on there and you can feel it it's about three or four thousand stick it's all you really need uh, but it's very thin so what I want to do is stop prevent that from happening and what you can do is this is one here that we're going to etch now you take regular electrical tape like this here and you put it on the back and that'll stop the back from being etched believe it or not that that's what will happen so you put that on there, just cover the whole back with the plastic tape. Now, also, I'm kind of thinking that you could use paint. Now, I guess if you're going to do a lot of this stuff, I believe you could uh, actually silk screen the ink on there, the pattern, and get what you need that way. I'm just trimming it off. Not that it matters. Okay, now I have a couple of holes I, I punched in there. And that's for the wire to suspend it in the solution over here. Now the solution, I took a, just an ordinary copper wire here. And one thing you got to watch out because the, the, uh, the hole will etch all the way through. Now I'm going to put this in the, in the uh, solution here. Now this is ferric chloride, and uh, my my tank is leaking, but I'll put that in there, and we'll let that sit in there. Now I used to have a bubble effect, but I no longer have that, because I used a, a aquarium pump, cheap one, and the clear chloride eventually gets into it, and what happens is that it eats away the inside and then you got to throw it away. So it lasts for quite a while, but I have to get another one. They're about eight, nine dollars. And um, one of these days I'm going to make a better bubbling effect, better, better system and a sloshing system. I like that better because the bubbling sort of has a tendency to erode the metal. Now they sell these things on eBay. You can buy them for etching printed circuit board. But today uh, what they're doing a lot is uh, CNC and uh, engraving it. Now, Jay made a bunch of uh, uh, boards for the headlight there and we engraved them. He engraved them with a graver which come out a little sharper. 
And anyway, um, I'm going to make a, I get a Pyrex dish and you, you, you make it so it'll, on a hinge, so it'll kind of slosh back and forth and the solution goes back and forth, back and forth, and what it does is it washes, the, washes off. And then furthermore, you, you should have a heater on it to, to warm it. It works a lot better when you warm it. But this works after a couple of hours. This will be all etched out and it'll, it'll work. It works. So um, that's one thing you can do. Now this one here, um, you can put that in the water. I'm going to try. Um, I'm going to try getting a little bit of a pan here rather than use the sink and see if I can do it to show you how it works. So let me go get that and we'll be right back. Okay, I got some water here and I'm going to try doing it. By the way, I want to mention that if Radio Shack in your area is still in business, who knows what they're doing. This is ferric chloride. You can buy it. It's about 11 bucks for that. And uh, you can get it there. You can also get it online. There's a lot of ways to get it, but it's ferric chloride is the stuff we're using. And uh, that's what etches it out. But it's kind of a mess. Stuff's kind of a mess. It uh, gets all over and stains. It won't hurt you. So now here we are. This is water. It's just plain water. Put that in the water. I'm going to get rid of this so I don't burn myself. Wow, that thing got hot. Anyway, I'll put this over here somewhere. All right, uh, got some water here. And I've got my little piece in here soaking. Let's see if I can do it. I can start to see it. You can just start to see it coming through there. And you take your fingers and you just kind of roll it like that, see? Just kind of roll it. And if I show you here, watch. You see it's starting to come off. Soak it a little bit more. I do it near the sink. When I do this stuff, I'm doing it out here for the video, but generally I do it, do all of this etching and all by the sink so I can have a water nearby because the ferric chloride although it's not dangerous it's just messy and you just clean these off make sure it's all off and there you go now one secret if there's missing a little bit you can take a Sharpie and you very carefully, a, a fine point Sharpie, and you can fill in the parts that are not uh, completed, like the rim there. You can see a little spot on the rim that isn't completed. Well, you, you can just go in there and do that, and it works pretty good. So there's one there I can use for the future. And uh, this one here is a little too thin. And uh, the water. Get rid of that. Okay, now... I'm going to show you another thing. You could actually use the same method with that newsprint and print out the number boards, number, whatever number you want, on that printer, on that paper, transfer it to the metal. Okay, and then what you do is you don't bother putting the tape on the back. You want it to etch all the way through, so you etch this from both sides. So as the back gets thinner, the front will get thinner, and it'll go through, and when you get it to go all the way through, which takes a lot. Now, the, the real secret of it is, and what I did on the, on the um, K4 is I made, a, I made a, a, a piece of brass that was um, accurately made. In other words, I, I scribed it and cut it carefully to make it exact size. It was all just cut. And... I had witness marks on the negative, so I lined this one up on this side, and then I took the negative and put it on the back side, and uh, made a reverse on the back, so it etched from both sides at the same time simultaneously. And you could do that uh, with the newsprint if you're careful, and you know how to put a little bit of a, uh, a witness marks on the corner so you could find the corners and then line it up, and then put it on one side, put it on the other side, and then do the same process with the water and then etch it, it'll all come all the way through. So you could actually make a number board out of metal, which actually, in, in, in uh, reality, is the way they were. They were actually made out of metal, 
and I don't know whether they had stencils or what, they cut them or whatever, but they were metal. They were brass, thin brass, maybe 30,000 stick brass. This is 10, so, and that's, that's how it's done. And uh, uh, later on, you can cut this out very carefully, clean it, and then um, tin this with solder and tin the body with solder and hold hold this on there and then heat up from underneath. I use a small torch and heat up from the inside the pipe and you can just see the solder just flow, done. And that's it. And then clean it up good. And then I take um, paint. I use um, Master Model, Master, Model Masters paint. And I think it's testers. And, and you put that on there, flat black or something, you put it on there. And then you paint the rest of the whole thing, and when you get done, done, you just you just clean it off with a with emery cloth, and it comes out real nice, you know. And, and you can you could highlight it, and then you don't want to paint over it with the with the spray paint because it's too thick. You want to use a thin paint on this because then it highlights the the uh, areas that you can so you can actually read it. So um, that's how you do it, and I hope this has been helpful to you. And I want to thank all of those guys out there that bought my headlight kits. I sold quite a lot of them, and uh, I made enough finished ones. I've got two extra ones left. This one here is a sample, and it's also the original one that I'll use. And uh, uh, I have two others to, to assemble, so if anybody's interested, I have them. And also, I have um, about three kits left, and you can see the kits. I think they're up here. Here's, here's how they come to you. Comes in a... Nice box, a chipboard box, and then inside there is all the all the, the parts, and the, comes with the um, uh, circuit board done. This is the glass, real glass. This is the body. Now you have to cut the the number board holes because sometimes you don't want those, and this is all the castings, of course, and of course the instructions. And it comes in a nice chipboard box, the picture on the front. Try to make it look professional. And, uh, okay. Uh, anyway, that's it for now. And uh, also one that I mentioned that right over here, later today, I'm going to be making the, the, the part two of making the crucible furnace. I made the lid, and I'm about ready to make the, the actual crucible furnace itself and uh, show you how to mix this stuff and so on and we'll try to uh, get that going and then we're not too far away this this headlight held me up there were some issues with it and the uh, shapeways didn't make the parts correctly then we had a problem we made so we we lost about a month there and uh, but anyway it's done now and it's history and uh, it's been successful so I'm quite pleased with the out the outcome of it and uh, so that's it for now about etching and uh, we'll see you again on the next video, and thanks for watching.